Tuppence Across the Mersey, famous book by a famous author, Helen Forrester. Four volumes of autobiography. The first book, Tuppence Across the Mersey, written in 1974. We met her, we had the good fortune to meet her um, in the, uh, about 1992. Um, and she ended up wanting to use one of our songs to promote her books. Through that friendship, I asked if, it, uh, if anyone had ever adapted Tuppence Across the Mersey as, as a play and was surprised when she said no, so she gave me a two-year option period to develop a script, which I did. Uh, two years later, she came to the opening night at the, uh, the Empire Theatre, and um, that's where it, it began. As a musical play, it was a, it was a big musical thing, specifically designed for the Empire. Uh, and, and in subsequent years, it's gone on, just as, as an Empire-type show. Um, but I always wanted to tour with it, and to do that, I had to sort of you know, bring it back to its original origins, which was a stage play, which brings us to the Epstein Theatre uh, all these years later. I've come on board pretty recently, really, um, no more than a few weeks ago, I think, really. Um, we've never worked together before. Um, it's not a project I've ever worked on before, uh, but it's one that I find very interesting. Um, you know, it's a great story. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it, really. Uh, you know, it's um, always like working in Liverpool. You know, it's uh, become sort of my second home. Um, so I'm quite steeped in the whole Liverpool. Because um, I thought you were thing. Liverpoolian, you know. Did you? Because oh, you've oh, done so much stuff in Liverpool. On, honorary I, Scouser. Yeah, I thought you were. Yeah, yeah. You were Liverpoolian. No, 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 I'm not. You know, but um, no, I have done a lot of work in the city over the years. And um, and I love it. You know, it's great, and it's great to be you know doing a a story which is um, so held so dear to the heart of Liverpool. It is the thing about the the book. Um, and I was I was watching this on Sky Art the other day, and uh, a journalist from the Times, you know, was was set, there was a, a program about the books that everybody should read, and of course the book she held up, Caitlin Moran, as her name. Uh, was Tuppence Across the Mersey. Mm. It just keeps going, this yeah, book. Right. It's not just a Liverpool story. The family, the Forrester family, um, originate from the southwest of England. So, you know, it's a bit like, uh, uh, not to oversimplify it, but it's, it's a bit like Downton Abbey, <laughs> having to live amongst the, uh, you know, the people of Brookside close, all in the same house. And you can imagine the sort of sparks that would fly given that scenario, but that's what, it, that's what actually happened. The Forrester family, you know, had private nannies, servants, private school education, all that sort of stuff. And then the father in his naivety brought the family up to Liverpool, um, thinking he'd be able to uh, follow in his grandfather's footsteps and make his fortune in this city. Not realizing that during the depression of the 1930s, it was the worst place he could have brought his family in line to, to rebuild his fortune. And because they had no idea of how to run a family budget, you know, because, um, well, obviously they didn't do very well anyway, <laughs> which is why he went bankrupt, uh, that made it even worse. So they were worse off, if you like, than all the people that actually originated from Liverpool. Um, so that, that, that's the, 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 the basis of the story and, and how Helen, who was the eldest daughter, was taken out of school in order to try and keep the family together while the mother and father tried to find work and she of course wanted to make her own way in life she wanted an education of her own and to be able to find a job and her father was very old school and said oh you you don't need a job you girls don't get jobs they get married and you know it was it's all that coming into it it's still part of the school curriculum this book for obvious reasons and uh, it's still as powerful today as it always has been and I had the good fortune to know Helen well and uh, you know there's many aspects to this script that she told me personally bits that she didn't put in the books that I've made, managed to incorporate in some of the dialogue so people that know the book um, you know it's like uh, to, to use a, a musician's term it's like the 12 inch version of the of, of the uh, of the play you're going to get little bits in there that um, Helen told me that you may not know so it's going to be fun. We're here today at the Epstein Theatre in Liverpool, um, auditioning some young Helens. Um, this is quite a difficult part to cast because um, she's supposed to be 
something like 14 in the book. And um, so we, 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 we've just taken the decision to, to get find uh, older professional actresses who can act younger, who can seem younger. There's some restrictions as well because the book is so well loved, you know, and people need to remember it sold a million copies, the first volume of this autobiography. A bestseller is 50,000. This sold over a million and still selling now. And the characters within it are so well defined and so well known and well loved. It's really important that we get the right looking person. Um, and I was saying, we said jokingly that, that, that to, not to get it right is like casting Paul McCartney with blonde hair. Which I have done in the past. <laughs> Playing a, an oboe instead of a bass guitar or a piano. So, you know, we've got to make sure that it's right. So when people uh, come to the theatre and as soon as they open their eyes and, and, the, and, the, and the lights come on, that they know that they're watching Thomas Across the Mersey. That's the, that's the key to it. I love the culture of Liverpool and so when it came up as an open audition to do it, I kind of jumped at the chance and I enjoy playing younger characters as well, it's much more fun. I wanted to audition for it because um, I've, I used to do theatre a while ago in college and I've been out of it for a while so I want to get back into it and hopefully maybe get a recall, who knows. <laughs> um, I heard about this play and as I'm acting I um, came along just to audition and Basically, I'm here today because I wanted to experience the auditioning and also, um, if I do get it, to um, experience being on stage for proper work. Mine was last minute, so I only found out about this last night. So um, I come in the queue today, and everyone had had like no makeup on and all dead tiny. I was thinking I was too, to look too old. I've got too much makeup on, and so I was a bit like unprepared. But I just went in and done my best. So I um, used a monologue that I had um, done before because I felt comfortable with it. So it's what are you most comfortable with, and then yeah. can show it off there. Um, I found one work which I. I really enjoyed and thought it was appropriate because it was quite, there was all sorts of moments in it, dramatic, going from like a challenging situations with a, my play is um, called Cooking with Elvis by Lee Hall and my character Jilly, where her father is now paralysed from a car accident and uh, she now has to, has to struggle and cope with her father being ill. Her mum can't deal with it, her mum's gone through problems, so herself having problems. And so this monologue really prepared me, I think, Course audition with lots of different um, types of feelings in it. Because I only found out about it quite late on, um, I just found um, a poem that suited me and um, would suit the audition and the show. She got in a state about weight and resented eating morsels she ate. Her colon, she constantly sluiced and reduced and reduced and reduced and Obviously you got to do vocal warm-ups and things, but I chose to do a monologue, which I've done before, but not in RP. Um, so lots of practising of vocal warm-ups and rereading and trying to choose the monologue that's comfortable for you, but also kind of suits the player that you're auditioning for as well. I think I just need to work on my accent a bit more. I'm very broad Yorkshire, so to drop that's quite hard. <laughs> but yeah, it's okay, I think. Um, I really enjoyed it. 
personally, I was, I was nervous, but um, I performed it to the best of my ability and um, projected it and enjoyed it. I think it's a good I think it went alright actually. It went better than, I'm not very well, so it went better than I thought it did. Um, I thought it went okay. They don't give too much away, no. obviously. You want them to say yes or no, they have no, but they don't. So, um, but yeah, it went okay. Brand new script. Uh, still obviously based on, on Tuppence Across the Mersey. New set, wonderful director, Mr Bob Eaton. Um, and we've just done some auditions for our, our new Helen. And we've done really well. We've, um, we've had uh, a very good day, uh, really. And uh, we think we've found our Helen, um, which is great. Um, and, um, and now we've just got to find the others. I got home, got a phone call and, and Lynn said you've got the part and I was just so excited because I'd read the book and it's such an amazing part and for an actress to sort of get your teeth into it's, I knew that it would be a good role to play. Sounds made up. Um, so I originally um, <coughs> studied musical theatre at Liverpool Theatre School and then I went to um, Central School of Speech and Drama in London and I've done a few shows. I was um, Juliet in Romeo and Juliet. I've played, I was Marianne in Sense and Sensibility. I was Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz. So I've done a mix of things. And I'm 26 and I often get cast as a much younger part than myself. So I'm used to that. That's something that isn't a challenge for me in this show. Although I'm aware that I'm getting older and I'm still playing 14 year olds. So hopefully that's, the audience won't realise. But um, yeah. Um, so I've done a lot of a lot of theatre in the past, um, and this is this is just amazing to be performing at home, and to be performing in the city. You know, I'm from Widnes, so to be performing close to home, um, and and really being something that has the feel of home as well. You know, the writing and everything. So that's t something I've never done before. One of the biggest challenges is that I know that most people in the audience will have seen both other Helens play Helen before. So that's quite, I've never been in that position where people will have, um, oh, the last girl did this, or the last girl did that, you know, so that's quite a big challenge. But with this, because there's no songs, and it's, um, Helen narrates the whole piece, and that's quite tricky in being the person that links everything together, she keeps the whole thing going. Um, so it's quite hard to, to keep your mind on, on what's coming next and also being in the moment with what's happening now because it the way that, that um, Bob's directed the piece is that it constantly flows um, so you, you might be in one mood in one piece and then 30 seconds later be in a completely different one and I don't think they had that as much with the musical because it was much more broken up with the songs so that's a challenge but I think I'm getting to grips with it. <laughs> Um, I'm Jamie Hampson. I played young Helen in Tuppence Across the Mersey three times, quite a few years ago now. And I'm about to hand the chariot over, as it were, to Maria. So we're about to go out and um, into Lord Street, which is one of the locations um, in the play and in the book. And Jamie is going to hand the pram over to me, and um, hopefully I will fill very big shoes. <laughs> So um, but here we are, middle rehearsals. Um, one of the things that Helen Forrester and I spoke about a lot um, during the, the last musical version of the show, you know, um, 
was the, the, the ability to tour Topmans Across the Mersey, but because it was purpose built for the Empire and it was so huge, we weren't able to tour that production. When I wrote it originally, I didn't have much concept of the fact that theatres would vary so drastically in size, so we were talking about. Uh, you know, doing an adaptation of it in order to be able to tour with it, which is what this is. Sadly, she's not here. Now, the last time we spoke about it, she was in Hoylake, the place that she needed the Tuppence to go and visit. That's where her grandmother lived. And I was educated in Hoylake as well, so I knew it well. So we were, we met. I met her in the King's Gap Hotel, uh, just um, around the corner from a, a pub that I knew well, the Green Lodge. So we had a drink, and uh, during the course of the conversation, she said, do you want to see the house? So I said, yeah, great. Yeah. So she escorted me around the corner to this house in Warren Road, a road I knew well, and she pointed the house out to where her grandmother lived and this, you know, that I'd spent the 20 years of my life till now, you know, thinking about this place. And then, to my amazement, I used to deliver newspapers there as a kid. When I was a schoolboy, I used to li literally, you know, walk up that path, <laughs> put the newspaper th through the door. Uh, I, I never occurred to me at that time, of course, that... that uh, it would have such a significant, um, it, well, it would be so significant in what I was to do in my, in my career, you know. Um, and it was only recently, because of course Helen's not with us anymore, uh, that I, I realised when I was writing this new version that um, that was the last visit she made to Hoy Lake, and, and I was with her. So it was quite a poignant moment for me to think that, you know, uh, this house that she longed to get to in the book you know, the last time she ever saw it, you know, uh, it was me that she was with. So I'm really, you know, it's quite touching to know that. And um, I know that when she comes to see, or if she ever, if she was able to see this version, you know, that uh, she would be really, I think she'd be thrilled at how we've managed to adapt it in such a way to bring the whole book to life, as opposed to, you know, the sort of more whimsical version of the, of the musical. This is a lot more hard hitting, so I think she'd recognize this a little bit more than, than the musical. Ask the milkman to return it to him. Oh, there's no mistake. It's for you and the baby. The other work I've done, like the, like theatre work, so we've been in Liverpool, but they've never been set in Liverpool because they're like the like fictional. But this, knowing that, I think what what makes it a bit more a bit more engrossing as well, especially with the script, is that it actually it's 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 a true story. I mean, so you you kind of get the feeling when you're saying it, like you've got to. You've got to get it right because it's not like something where someone's just got like a good idea and written it down. It actually happens like real people, so it's um, it's it's interesting. But it's it's really good to know that everything that we're doing, everything that it's based around, happened like 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 like, rich, like next door to us. It's 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 got a weird feel to it, but it's it's really good. I'm enjoying it. Can we just do that? Can we just do that? Can we just do that all again? I think I think the biggest challenge with the piece is um, is how to tell such a kind of big story, such a, 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 a wide-ranging story in, in in on stage, you know, without having access to um, you know loads of different sets and scenes and that sort of thing. So what we've um, what we've come up with is a, is a very simple but I think very theatrical way of doing it, whereby we apparently seem to use kind of nothing. Um, but uh, but we create um, all the scenes out of well next to nothing really you know. This is an audience that feels like they have ownership of the piece. So after the first night, we'll s we'll know whether people feel like we've done it justice and how they react. There is a lot of humour in it, which there is in the book, but not as much as in the show, and I think it makes it a much more enjoyable night out. So it would be nice to see once we've done that, that people enjoy, you know, that they've enjoyed that and that they're happy that that's what we did with the piece. And um, yeah, just that I remembered all the lines. <laughs> Um, just to see how people react to it, yeah, and it's a press night as well, so to, to read the reviews as to what people write. I think I think first night's a press night, I'm sure it's the first one. But um, it's just to see mainly how like, the public react to it as well, because, like, of course, um, like there's been, I think there's been a musical, a couple of musicals before, hasn't there? So people have obviously seen that, so we've, we've always got to be aware, like, how... I'm just saying what I've heard the others say, but... Um, they are, like, I've never, up until... 
the audition I'd never really heard of it because obviously it's, it's an older book and I'm only like I'm only 17 so but it's it'll be good to see because I'm presuming people who are gonna see it are gonna be like older so it'll be good to see how an older audience reacts to it as well which should be quite fun. It'll be fantastic to see it um, we're, you know, we're in front of an audience, um, some of whom of course will know the story, some of whom won't know the story, um, but it'll just be great to, uh, to see the thing all kind of coming together because obviously the audience is the last part of the jigsaw.